Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to talk about gas masks. Now, stick around because this is going to be an informative video. A lot of folks out there right now are concerned about the future. We live in very unstable times. There's a war in Europe right now that gets spread and become World War III. We just came out of a pandemic. There's all sorts of things that people are concerned with, the collapse of our economy and all sorts of stuff that are potential threats down the road. And so people are preparing themselves as best they can for the future, an uncertain future. Parcel Safety offers gas masks like those that you see behind me, and we're gonna go through the different models here in this video, but they offer gas masks that are affordably priced for the average person. Sometimes those masks can be prohibitively expensive. So in today's video, we're gonna do some testing with the different gas masks, do some shooting with them to show you how to use a gas mask with a rifle or a long arm, and just kind of explore these products a little bit to give you guys an idea of what you can get for your money. So today we're gonna to conduct a couple of different tests and demonstrations with these masks. First of all, we're gonna don and clear the mask and show you how that process is done and then do some shooting with a rifle with the mask on to show you how to use the mask if you're using a weapon much like the AR-15, which is the most common rifle out there in, in use in the United States. We're also gonna hit the mask with a Bryna pistol, which we're gonna use the hard training balls to show off their impact resistance. We're also gonna use pepper spray to show that the masks seal properly against chemical agents. So it should be a fun video. I hope you guys stick around and watch some of the testing that we do because I'm really anxious to, uh, to get into this and have some fun. The pepper spray rarely is that fun, but you guys might find it fun. We have three different masks out here, but this doesn't represent their entire product line. We're just gonna briefly go over some of the features of each of these masks and talk about how you can use them. Now. This mask would be the most expensive mask that's on their website, and this is the SGE 400. This is gonna have the most features of the masks out there. Uh, this one, you can get spectacles for it. If you uh, wear glasses, you have like inserts that you can buy for this, so you can have corrective lenses inside of there. You can move the, the filter from one side to the other. You can run dual filters. <clears throat> you can just you know, set this mask up any number of different ways. Now, this one is at 350. Over here at 250, we have the NB100. This one, you'll notice, has the ability to run the filters on one side or the other or both, but you don't have the port in the bottom like the SGE400. This one is 250. Then one of their entry-level masks, the ST100X, this is a mask that comes to market at $140 for the mask and all of these masks use a standard 40 millimeter canister. So you need to pick the canister that's going to fit the purposes you think you need the gas mask for. Do you want CBRN? Do you want something to help you get out of a house that's on fire? Are you worried about pesticides, chemicals, sprays, acetone, uh, you know, whatever. You can use these masks for any number of different purposes and you're gonna want the filter that is best suited for that purpose. Now these do use, again, a 40, a 40 millimeter standard mount, mounting system. And so you can pick up any filter you want, not just from Parcel Safety, but from any of the manufacturers of filters out there. It's going to fit these masks because it uses that standard 40 millimeter. You will find that all the masks that we have out here, they're gonna be resistant to impact. They're going to have a silicon face mask. Let's see if I can pull these straps all the way here so you can see it. So you have this where your nose and mouth will go. You're gonna have anti-fog lenses on all the masks here. This cup where, that you respirate through will also uh, help to keep from getting vapor up into the, the mask itself. So you're gonna breathe primarily through this cup that's around your, your mouth and you will exhale through the vent here and you'll inhale through one or both of the ports depending on how many canisters you have on the mask. This one they say is ballistically rated, the SGE 400. By ballistic they mean a relatively small projectile going right around 150 meters per second, 400 feet per second. Uh, basically if somebody throws a rock at you or, or something like that, uh, when they say ballistic I don't think they mean, I know they don't mean handguns, rifles, things like that. They're going to talk about stuff that's, um, you know, might get thrown at you or hit you in the face at a relatively low velocity. The rest of them are gonna be impact resistant. So again, if you fall and hit your face or something like that, you bang into a wall in the dark, the mask isn't gonna shatter. Uh, it's, some, it's like a, it's a pretty tough like polycarbonate or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of, but you can see how this one is set up 
so that if you do have the kit inside of there for the corrective lenses, how you can see. Now, one of the things that's nice about the masks is you have a very, very wide field of view. The reason you might want a mask like this, where you can mount the filter off to one side, is so that uh, if you run one filter, you're a right-handed shooter, you're going to put this on the left-hand side of your mask so you can get your face down next to the rifle. You can also mount the filter in the front or on the side, so you have three mounting points on this, this particular model. When you get down into the entry-level models, see if I keep that from falling off, it just seems like it wants to fall. I may just have to let it stop. Okay, down you go. Next up <laughs> is the affordable model. All right, so this one's only gonna allow you to put the filter in the front. You still have a wide field of view and it's gonna be lightweight. And again, this one's only 140 bucks. So this will get you started. It will use any of the different filters that are out there because once again, it uses that standard 40 millimeter filter system. It's also pretty interesting that they're available with a tent so that if you're going to use these primarily in daylight, you do have the ability to pick these up with a different tent to them versus just being completely transparent. So when looking at the masks on their site, take a look at each of the masks and determine what your needs are. Are you going to be able to need to drink water? Are you going to be able to need to run a filter on one side or the other? Are you fine with just running the filter in front? Again, Pick the mask that's going to suit your needs and your budget. We would like to welcome Pad back to the channel. <laughs> and he's going to be our uh, test dummy for all the stuff that we're going to do this mask this afternoon and by proxy doing it to him as well. Uh, we will set this mask up here really quickly for you guys. So when you get these masks, they're going to, be, they're going to ship in a basic configuration. Some of the masks will have multi-ports. This mask has three different ports. This mask has two different ports for mounting your canister. So we're gonna set this mask up for a right-handed shooter. This mask does allow that functionality. With just one filter, we're gonna unscrew the top. We're going to break the seal on the bottom. And now this, this filter is ready for use. Now this is a filter from Parcel, and it shows on the side all the different things that this particular filter will protect you against. It doesn't say pepper spray, but uh, hopefully that's one of those things, it has an expiration date on it. You wanna keep it sealed, otherwise that expiration date's no longer valid. Now when the mask ships, it typically if you have a multi-port mask, it's gonna have this center port uh, open. On that one, it has both ports closed. The reason you have one open and two closed is because you're gonna repurpose one of these screws. So we don't wanna put the, mask, the filter on the, the front of the mask. We're gonna set it up for a right-handed shooter. So I'm gonna put the filter on the left-hand side of the mask. I'm gonna unscrew this port cover, screw it into the front. Right above this is where he will exhale. This is where the air will go out. And the air now will only come in through this one port on the side. And that port has the filter on it. You'll just wanna make sure that that's snugly seated. And now the mask is set up. All right, I'm next I'm gonna have pad dawn and clear the mask to show you guys how to make sure that the mask is seated properly and well functioning. We're gonna go ahead and put the mask on now. And first you're gonna pull the mask up over your head and then pull it down in front of your face. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get the seal around your face as best as you can. Now these straps, you're gonna pull on them or release them by the little tabs that you have here. Now Pad's gonna start with the top straps and work his way down, pulling the mask tightly against his face. You don't wanna over tighten it, you just wanna have it where you get a good seal. And now he's gonna clear the mask and he wants to make sure that the mask is functioning. What he's doing now is covering the intake port and you'll see it suck up against his face. Go ahead, do that again for me, Pad. See how it's sucking up against his face? He now knows he has a good seal. Now he can exhale, and you know the mask is working. So now this mask is all set up and ready for pepper spray. <laughs> he just stands there. <laughs> all right, we will do some pepper spray tests here in a minute. There are different types of firearms out there, obviously. Some of them are more gas mask friendly than others. If you have a Sig Virtus, for example, they make a stock that has a large downward bow to it that is meant to clear gas mask so you can use a regular optic. For most of you out there watching this, you have an AR-15 as your go-to rifle. And for that, there's really not much you can do because this buffer tube is integral to the function of the rifle and you can't bend it and, and expect it to work. And so with this type of rifle, you're gonna run a higher mount and you'll be able to, you won't be able to get your cheek down against the buffer tube 
as readily as you would without a gas mask, but what you can do is cant the rifle slightly and you can now get the dot and it will clear the gas mask. So if you plan on using a gas mask quite a bit, you might want to adopt a weapon system that is more configurable to the gas mask, but if you don't really plan on running a gas mask all that often, go ahead and run your AR-15. And Pad's now going to demonstrate how he uses the AR-15 with the mask installed. Here's the old Bryna pistol, have a video on it. You can shoot pepper balls and things like that, pepper and CS mixed, but it also has training balls. And these little training balls are a hard compressed powder. And we uh, confirmed zero, you can see where they splashed on the steel plate there. So these are moving at about 240 feet per second. And so we're gonna stand fairly close and we're gonna shoot the parcel safety mask right in the face. And now, you can just kind of see where it hit, but I can rub it away. It would appear that we didn't even so much as scratch the lens, much less break it. So this particular mask has a neck band on it, so you can let it hang in front of you. Hey, Pad, when's the last time uh, you went through the gas chamber? Uh, probably about 14 years since I qualified. Okay, well, how about this? I have some pepper spray and I have a countdown timer. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to dawn and clear that mask after I say gas, and I'm gonna spray you with this. Sounds good. All right, get ready. All right, guys, 20 seconds on the clock. Gas! <laughs> 10 seconds. Five, three, there it is. <laughs> All right, do you, do you uh, any pepper? Uh, a little spicy. A little, a little spicy? spicy? But I can breathe just fine, breathe just fine. My eyesight's real good. Okay, so you got it on your skin. So some of it actually made it through the filtration system? Yeah, I feel it, I feel it right around the edges of the mask. Okay. Nothing inside. Nothing inside the mask? Correct. Okay. <laughs> this thing wants to make sure I, sp I spray you. All right, so you did good, 20 seconds. I'll you smell it. awful, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys should swing by the Parcel Safety website. I'll put a link in the video description below and check out some of the products. The products are high quality. They're gonna have different features that have, as I've already mentioned previously in the video, but they're of quality construction, they're lightweight, and they certainly seem to be a good value for the money. Now, this particular mask, you can still see the pepper spray on it, and the wind's coming out of the, uh, the southwest, which is right into my face, so I'm getting whiffs of that pepper spray. Talking to Pad afterwards, so pepper spray not only attacks you know, your respiratory system, but it also attacks your skin. So when he was initially sprayed, he was getting the burning sensation on the exposed skin that the pepper spray came into contact with, but asking him specifically, did you inhale any pepper spray? He said, no. He said he smelt at the very beginning of my firing of the pepper spray, a, like a little bit of an apple cider smell, but after that he didn't experience any type of gas getting in through the filtration system or through the seal of the mask. But again, he was using milk and stuff like that to get the pepper off the skin because pepper spray, again, doesn't go after just your respiratory system. So if you guys are on the market for a mask, I would say that these are a good value for the money. Again, parcel safety, I'll put a link down below. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family, link in the video description below. Also right here on YouTube, you got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us here in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 14 years of support. And thanks to Pat again for being our test dummy in this uh, rather interesting video. We'll talk to you guys soon.